Crocus's Creek, um, decided to perhaps our last bear run. It's not pretty, it's not clean, but I uh, thought it would be kind of interesting to just show everybody what it looks like. Uh, of course, we start off by jumping in the corner and wall hacking our way around the doors. Actually, it doesn't work. Um, what we do do is we get 10 people, 10 fine video game athletes, um, mix a tier 4, tier 5 gil, uh, gear, uh, and really just buff to the gills. Um, that's as close to being in tier 6 as we can get. And we will be chain pulling uh, pretty much continuously for the next 45 minutes real time, but we double speeded the video here, so it won't be quite as long and boring. Um, opening pulls should be pretty familiar to anyone who's doing that with a serious attempt at making a bear run. Um, do try and pull all the ads up into Dean's big gay pally aura there. Um, we, you might have noticed we, we do a little bit of a different marking scheme than usual. The reason we do that is uh, we found that having two tanks trying to mark Skull X Square kind of thing really didn't work out because we kept overwriting each other's stuff. Uh, so I generally will start marking from the top of the list and Deans will start marking from the bottom of the list and hopefully then we don't screw each other up. Anyway, Pat in the middle here pretty much got to kill it at some point so we did it there. Uh, a difference between normal runs and bear runs is that we're not going to stop for hardly anything. We're going to run in here, charge guys, uh, all DPS is focusing on the healers. As soon as one of those is mostly dead, Deans is going to pull the next group. An exciting view of my bear ass, so to speak. Uh, watching the, the backside here. Oh man, puns of plenty. Um, anyway, pick up the two guards. Uh, at the speed we run this thing, we really only get one pair of guards from the back, so I pull them again in, into the uh, uh, big gay pally aura, and so they can take a little damage from that, and we just mow them down. Um, at this point, we've already pretty much pulled the, uh, the end the boss there, the Tempest. Um, Orchimedes dies, he onks, he dies. That's just fun. Uh, and we'll just burn him down. Alright, switching to DPS mode. Um, of course, obviously I'm doing this as a bear tank and can switch kind of between tanking and DPS roles. Uh, a Fury Warrior, or whatever you DPS people do, uh, DPS Warrior could pretty much do it if, as long as you have a decent set of uh, tank gear. And so after about 10 seconds of stopping to drink, we start burning on the on the, this boss. Um, obviously, if you're doing this, you, you know the fight. Uh, I guess the only comments maker, most of our DPS have north of a thousand DPS. Uh, we bring two healers, one primary tank, one off tank, which is me. Uh, someone who can flip between DPS and, and tanking duties as needed. Uh, but really, you just want to bring the most damage heavy group you can possibly fit in. Three healers is going to kill you, probably. Uh, as you can see, he's this boss is below 50% before he does his first lightning storm. That's maybe pretty typical, although we have been getting faster on him. Alright, collapse again, minor fuck up, um, we we didn't really collapse in the right spot, so we had to pause DPS there, but just for a second, um, to get out of Lightning Storm, but that's okay, it's better than a wipe. Um, this actually is not a, the cleanest run we've ever done by a long shot, but I thought since I'd frapsed it, and since I converted the video, and since that's a pain in the ass, we'd show it with uh, warts and all. Um, Partly, just so you can learn from our mistakes, but also uh, because I, I, I don't think you really have to be super 100% clean. Alright, we, we killed the um, pets down here, and notice what, we are leaving the, uh, the chests. So they'll be there after the run. We can go get those later. Just waste time to get them now. So again, we're marking, kind of on the fly, picking stuff up. 
using our weird marking system, which is mildly confusing, but seems to keep us from overwriting each other um, to just kind of declare targets. So now while one group is still killing, I'm going to run up and pull the other one. That's going to be a recurring theme here. Um, obviously, there's not much time for people to, to drink or stuff. Uh, I'm told by mana users that they'll go through 12 to 20 mana pots per run. They're basically just mashing it every time the cooldown is down. There's more high speed DPS in for you. And once again, as, as soon as my, ta my uh, target is dead, start running up the ramp here and get ready for the next ball. I, I did actually loot there, which is not common. We actually skip a lot of loot. Um, just because seconds add up into minutes and we're, even with some practice, we're still cutting it by minutes. Pull the bears. The, the two bear pull isn't too big a deal. Um, Pull coming up next is actually, I think, the most stressful tanking moment in the entire damn run for me. <laughs> um, hit one, taunt resist, hit, hit the other guy. Okay, now taunt is down, both bears are stacked and beaten on our pally tank, which is not a good thing. Uh, but we have exceptional healers and recover. Look at all the numbers coming on my butt. There's a little chatter on vent going on, uh, which I don't think gets into the video here. Uh, we're pretty much setting things up on the fly. As soon as man, uh, healers feel they have the mana, we go and pull. Now, I mark our pally tank here. Um, it's not as big a deal on, on this boss, but sometimes you can see the boss kind of disappears in just a swirl of spell effects, and uh, at times it, and on certain fights it can get pretty hard to see them. Um, if we're not standing on top of each other, bad things happen for this fight, so there's the taunt change. And back. Of course if if you're doing a bear run for real, um it's really not a big deal to to do any individual fight. It's it's just the challenge of trying to do them all back to back very quickly. Um, we average about three minutes per boss. I think Dragon Hawk takes us maybe three and a half. Uh, again, that's that's with the people doing DPS sitting between a thousand and fifteen hundred DPS. So after these changes, I kind of chill out on the uh, on hitting the guys just so I don't rip aggro because that would be bad. Uh, and we loot up really quick. Master loot. If you're really fighting over loot coming out of ZA, you're probably really on the border of should or shouldn't be doing this. All right. Um, if there's any time that you're gonna chill out. And take a few moments to make sure that the polls are correct. Uh, probably Dragon Hawk is a good spot to do it. Um, this is the place where, if anywhere, you get screwed. And waiting for cooldowns for stuns. Um, some people are, some of our tailors are using nets for backup stuns. That'd be good uh, because. There's a real incentive to do things fast, and as you can see, people start dying when that happens. And that's really unfortunate um, when you're trying to do a speed run. Uh, 
So I, uh, being this early on in the Dragonhawk trash, we'll probably just have him run back. But it's worth emphasizing. I, I, again, you know, this isn't a perfect run, but it's worth showing warts and all, just so people understand. It doesn't have to be absolutely dead, 100% flawless. We're going to have more flaws than that coming up. <laughs> um, Alright, so the priest is running back. Buff on the fly. And here we get into what is actually, I, I think of all the bear runs we've done, um, probably the very worst um, scout pops that we've ever had. So this is kind of a bloody and ugly Dragonhawk trash run. So there's the charge. DPS all focuses on the on the scouts. After that, I'm pretty much just running in. I try it. I just debuff stuff as much as I can so they beat on our main tank less. And uh, it's kind of fun. I sometimes get to actually break 700 DPS as an off tank, which is okay. Um, here's me making a big mistake. I, I charged that guy without backup. It wasn't necessary. Luckily, our, uh, our other druid saved my ass. <laughs> so you can see those guys crumple pretty quick. We're like watching behind. This is where things start to get a little hairy because uh, we've got scouts popping left and right. So, charge that guy. He resists the uh, the charge and then the taunt resists. And we decide to, just for the hell of it, run it in anyway. Good job of hunters taking down the scout in the back. You can see we got through this really more by luck than skill this time. We, we had a few screw-ups, but... Again, it doesn't really have to be 100% absolutely flawless. Although flaws do really hurt you if they build up over time. <coughs> Alright. Chain pulling into these guys. Uh, you gotta watch out. There's a patrol that comes up the back. I want to make sure that we've got all totems and people recalled from that area. And... About this time, as we're pulling up in Dragonhawk, um kind of getting to where buffs are starting to r run out so once we, we finish up this trash it's a good time to just kind of look at your buff bars uh, yes the buff bars on my lovely interface here that cause I'm really not a UI modder kind of person and I hate all my crap breaking on patch day um, but just make sure everything is reasonably up and ready to go again the, this boss okay. takes three to three and a half minutes um, so, I want to make sure you're going to last at least that long. Generally, our strategy here is to kill one hatcher, let the other one go, and he just pops an entire side. Um, it's a shade risky, because that's that's a lot of Dragonhawks to be running around. But, <clears throat> on the other hand, you can just blaze through the guy. Um, yeah, camera up, avoid the bombs. Again, if, if you're doing a bear run for real, you should know all this stuff. Uh, you can see the pally off the side there, just tanking absolutely half the damn instance at once. Now, this is a place where we actually got a little overzealous and, and the, kind of the adrenaline rush that you get uh, from doing the, the bear run got to us, because I, I think we burn this guy a little bit faster than we should have <clears throat> and we kind of got into the enrage before the second hatchers got out, out well right about the same time the second hatchers got out and that will come to haunt us here in just a few minutes you can see the, the other pop is up there's a lot of damage going around he starts throwing fire bombs left and right there's a lot of crap for people to be taken care of Tank sees his life go down, a trinket, and dead. <laughs> um, obviously, that, that's not a good thing. We basically do survive this one just on, on the dent of our, our exceptional DPS who just mows the guy down from about 4% anyway. So, 
it does cost us about a minute though. It costs us a minute or so to res everyone up uh, while they're doing that. I'm kind of playing with my bags, lining up my rebuffs as fast as I can. Um, but again, just to point out, it doesn't have to be dead flawless. Uh, we we screwed up pretty bad here, and as you're gonna see at the end, we we get away with it. Um, important thing is kind of stay calm. This is not a time to be arguing over who you know did what when. Um, just keep your eyes on the prize and buff up. Get ready to go. Again, we'll mount up. Uh, it saves like 10 seconds, but that again. You do that a bunch of times, you get a couple free minutes out of it, and minutes do count in this game. So here's the center trash. Nothing special there. And the first of many, many packs of panthers or cats or whatever the hell these things are. Again, generally as off tank, just doing what I can to contribute what DPS I can to keep the rage up. Uh, one thing that slipped by there is there's a path that runs back and forth. Um, you may have seen me mark them with a the moon. Um, that's just helpful so you can see them through objects and everything. We can tell where they are. We don't want to kill any more than we have to. Um, so if we can dodge those guys, we will. And cat's down. I'm gonna take a look. You know, you, in a sped up video here, you really can't see it, but you can see the moon. You can tell that they were a safe distance away to make this run across here. So usual rule supply, no AOE, all that kind of crap. Um, after a little bit of a crappy dragon hawk run, we're about to make it up. Uh, burn the crocodile stun down. These guys are kind of bastards. They will kill your cloth pretty quick. And now we're going to be kind of begin a cycle of me running ahead, pulling everything I can um, back into the Pelly's holy Nova aura, and let him just pound stuff down as soon as I'm free as the off tank. They're still beat on stuff. And I run up and I'll pull the next pack. Pally's big gay aspect of the light well there. And while they're beating on that, I will pull the next pack. And you've got to kind of be communicating uh, on vent with your healers, just checking where mana is. Because um, that could end you pretty quick. Alright, one more cat pack. And they kind of ran away from me. I, I self buffed there, which drew some of them back. Um, again, once you can pull them into the, the pally AoE there. And when they're beaten on the pally, I'm all free to run again. Off I go. Check with the healer's mana. Mark these guys, there's really only two, so you only need one mark. And we blow them up. Alright, they can finish that guy. I'll run up, mark the next pair, pull. Everyone's telling me they're good on mana and everything. And again, it, you know, as an off tank, I'm just kind of keeping aggro on my main target and then um, spamming AoE, uh, swipe or cleave or whatever you have, um, just to add to the, the DPS, whatever I can. All right. We got lucky there. The, the pat was uh, coming right around right at the right time. If they're not there, you just mark and pull the the group that's furthest from them see we're not 
bothering to even kill everything. Just mark the flame casters, yank them around the corner. In this case, um, kill the skull. Off tank's got the axe. I pull up the unmarked. That means the off tank's going to be free first. So, or, um, excuse me, the main tank's going to be free first. So he's going to actually run down and go pull the rest of them while I'm doing this. Got to be thinking, you know, it's a, it's a three minute boss fight about. Um, so if we have three minutes on the timer, we've got a chance. Well, that would be really tight. Uh, you'd like to start this with a, at least four. Um, if I remember right, I think we had six or seven before, somewhere around the pull. Uh, again, I'm marking the, the main tank because this is a fight where it's important for me to stand on him. And he's going to just disappear in a ball of stall effects here in a minute. And he runs ahead of me and try and catch up to him. Good deal. So as off tank on this boss, I'm not really trying to pull aggro. I do do what DPS I can, but mainly I just try and keep him debuffed. Uh, when he splits, when you see him kind of do his little split animation, just start cleaving or swiping or whatever, uh, the cat will exist in the game before you can see him. And you end up, if, you, if you're just spamming your uh, cleave or swipe, you'll pick him up before he goes anywhere most of the time. Right, coming up on 30 or 50%, start spamming again, get another cat. Um, and again, just trying to keep the boss debuffed as much as I can because I'm not really contributing a lot of DPS here. Physical DPS on totems, all that kind of good stuff. And one final split. Now here, I, I swipe a couple times. I think I tag, tag the uh, cat, and he just runs away for half a second, but no big deal. And the last 25%, if you've gotten this far with more than a minute on timer, you're pretty much home free. Alright guys, well that's about it for this run. Uh, hopefully that was helpful, it showed a little bit of kind of the pacing and everything. If you want to see it done right, Elitist Jerks has a really nice video out where they actually do a fairly pro job as opposed to our stumbling, bumbling, drunks in a bucket kind of run. Um, but overall, you don't have to be too perfect, you just have to be pretty decent. So that's it, and hopefully uh, you guys have good luck with your bear runs and we hope to see y'all spam and trade chat and making puppies cry in the near future. Oh yeah, uh, after this slow ass gnome goes around and eventually after about two minutes of, of doing stuff does give you your bear, don't forget to uh, do a little victory dance and then go loot your chest because they are still there. Alright kites, have fun. I never go nowhere, man, I never go nowhere Traffic's bad out there, man, I'm saving wear and tear I like conditioned air, man, I never go nowhere I go upstairs, downstairs, backyard, lawn chairs, living room, bathroom, bedroom, furnace room, hot tub, cedar deck, pillow, fire, washer, dryer, pantry, patio, bar, aroma, video, cold cellar, rec room, ping pong, mahjong, beer, count, wear, then speed dial, order, and I ain't going nowhere, man, I ain't going nowhere. It's dangerous out there, man, might have been a big bomb scare. Hard to get off of this easy chair, I ain't going nowhere. I go online, DSL, Amazon, buy and sell, eBay, layaway, last bit, noon today, plasma, Judy Judge, broadband, Matt Drudge, J. Crew, BNN.com, CNN, JPEG, email, pop up, she mail, shower can, filter spam, slime, bam, I think it's spam. I ain't going nowhere, man, never gonna go nowhere. It's a bungle jungle out there, man, some kid got mauled.